Today in our 2015 Chevrolet Captiva, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Curt T-Connector Vehicle Wiring Harness with 4-Pole Flat Trailer Connector, part number C56257. But it looks like once it's installed, when you're ready to use it, you're going to take it out of your compartment here and lay it across the top of our weather stripping, being sure to stay away from the center where our latch is so we don't pinch our wires and drop our cover down over top of that. It's going to help hold it in place. And we'll just close our hatch. We can hitch it up to our trailer when we're done with it. Put our cover on. We can open our hatch back up. And we'll just coil up our wire. We actually use the top the cap as a wrap to hold it up. Just wrap it around the outside and we'll put it down here in this compartment so we're ready to use it again. Now one of the big reasons you're going to want one of these module lights is it's going to isolate your vehicle's wiring from your trailer's wiring so if you're going to have a back feed or a short you're not going to harm the vehicle's delicate wiring system. Now here's what your kit's going to consist of. We're going to have our module it's going to isolate our trailer from our vehicle. Our T-connectors are going to go into this to be for the left side. This will be for the right with our four pole flat trailer connector and weather tight cover. We'll also have a fuse holder and the wire to run from the rear of the vehicle up to the front to power our module. To start our installation, we're going to need to remove this floor here and this, these styrofoam pieces underneath. Now to remove the floor, we're going to have to take out these two 10 millimeter bolts and hold down our package hooks. There's going to be two push pins in the center. These are a little tough to get out, but just kind of work them back and forth and they'll come out of there. We're also going to need to remove this cover that goes over our spare tire. Now we're going to have two Torx nuts that are going to be in here, one in front, one back here. There are 45 Torx T45. Everything I do on this side, we're going to also do on the other side. We're also going to need to remove this, plate, this sill plate here to allow these to pass. We just pull up on it and we'll set that aside. Now we can pull these styrofoam pieces out of the way. We're also going to need to remove this small screw at the bottom of the plastic pocket here. We're going to use a flat bladed screwdriver. Once you get that screw loose, you can just pull up on the bottom and we'll set this pocket aside. Now we're on the driver's side, we're going to need to remove this plug here and our T-connector is going to plug in between that. So we're going to go ahead and pop it off of the wall here, out of the clip. I'm going to pull it out of the way. And you're going to see a little tab right here. We just need to pop up on that little tab and separate our plug. Now we're going to take the T-connector with the yellow wire and it's going to snap in between. I'm going to line up the one with the little tab on it here. Snap that together. I'm going to give them a little tug, make sure they're nice and tight. You can plug this back into the body here. That's what's going to tie into our tail light. We're also going to need to ground this. So we can pull the ground back. We're going to take off this 10 millimeter nut here and use this factory ground.
we have that nice and secure. I'm going to take our green wire. I'm going to run that across to the other side of the vehicle and hook it onto the passenger side tail light. Now I'm just going to take it and run it underneath this carpeting here and come out on the other side. We'll remove this one as well. Just kind of gently pry out on it. We're going to locate that locking tab. Be right there. Just pry up a little bit. Separate them. Take our new T-connector with the green wire on it. And we're going to plug it in line. These only go one way, so you, can all, you can't really make a mistake with them. We'll just give it a little tug to make sure they're both connected good. And we can snap our plug back onto the body. We're going to go ahead and zip tie our wires up out of the way with our supplied zip ties. And just zip tie it to the factory wiring. Just keep it tucked out of the way. Now we're going to have our black wire yet to deal with, which we're going to have to use a butt connector and tie it to that roll of bulk wire. We have a nice grommet right here we can drill through, so we're going to drill a small hole, just small enough to get our wire through. We'll push the wire down through there and then we can put some silicone on it to seal it up. So we're going to drill like a 3 16 hole. Through our grommet. Now we already have the wire stripped back from the factory on the box side so we can place our butt connector in on there and we're going to crimp it down. You want to make sure you invest in a good set of crimpers if you're going to be doing this because you don't want to over crimp it or under crimp it compromising our connection. And we can strip back about a quarter of an inch on the roll of wire we have. We'll slide that in there on the other side. And we'll crimp it as well. And just give it a nice tug to make sure it's secure. We'll take a little bit of electrical tape and we're going to wrap it up just to further protect their connection. Just go ahead and feed all that wire down to the bottom side of the vehicle. Now we'll take our two-sided tape, and place it on our box, and we're going to select a location that's a flat surface to mount our box onto. We're going to go ahead and just hang it right here on this fender well. I'm going to clean it off with a little bit of rubbing alcohol, just so we get any dirt and grime, any kind of oils that might be on there off. We're going to stick it in place and that'll be out of the way of all of our storage boxes. We'll lay this over. We can put some zip ties in there. Now we're going to take a little bit of our black RTV. If you don't have any, you can pick it up on our website. It's going to be part number LT37467. We're just going to put a little bit around the bottom here. To help seal it up so we don't get any, any moisture or dirt up inside our passenger compartment. Now we can reassemble our panels. Start by dropping our box back in. And we're going to take our four pole flat wire. We're going to lay it on the floor here. Then we can reinstall our styrofoam. And we'll just need to tuck our weather stripping. We'll pull it back out. 
so everything sits nice and flush. We take our styrofoam tire cover. And then we can reinstall our floor, and that'll complete the inside installation of our wiring harness. Now we've gone ahead and routed our wire towards the front of the vehicle, making sure we zip tie it all along. Went up over our rear cross member here, and we followed the brake and fuel lines all the way to the front of the vehicle, zip tying it every six or eight inches. And you want to make sure you stay away from anything that's going to be a heat source or a moving item that could pinch the wires. We went along our lines here. And then we followed them right up the firewall, being sure to stay far away from our steering components as well so we don't get anything caught in the steering components. Now we've zip tied our wire following these lines on the firewall here or on the fender. And we've come down, we're going to come across, we're going to install our fuse. So we'll need to cut this back once we figure out how much we're going to need. We'll cut off our excess. And we'll strip it back. Put on our butt connector. And we're also going to strip back about a quarter of an inch on both sides here for our fuse holder. Once that, we're going to put a ring terminal on. So we'll go ahead and crimp that into place. And to the other side, we're going to go into that butt connector. And we'll crimp that. And we'll put a little bit of tape on this one as well to help keep out any dirt and corrosion that might build up in there. Now we're going to need to attach it right to the top of the battery, so we'll pull the cover off our positive side here. And you can gently pry up on the back half here and separate this cover. We can run our wire over. And we're gonna go ahead and loosen up this 10 millimeter nut. Now this nut's gonna be captured on here so it can't come loose. So we're just gonna go ahead and put a little cut and our ring terminal you can slide it underneath there and we'll tighten it back up. Now you can also choose to pick up a six millimeter metric nut, and you can attach it to that stud that's on the back side there. We're just going to go ahead and use it this way on this one, and we'll reinstall our cover. Now we can take our 10 amp fuse, we'll slide it into our fuse holder, and we'll put on the protective cover to keep out any moisture. Can tuck our wire down out of the way, and now we can go ahead and test our lights. Now we're going to test our wiring using the Curt 4 pole flat trailer connector tester available on our website, part number I26. First, we're going to test our tail lights. Then we'll test our left turn signal, followed by our right. Now we should see two red lights for our brake light circuit. 
Perfect. Now we're ready to hit the road. And that's going to do it for our look at and install of the Kirk T-Connector Vehicle Wiring Harness with 4-Pole Flat Trailer Connector, part number C56257 on our 2015 Chevrolet Captiva. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.